Hey, resellers. I have a special guest today. I am so excited that Chad from Gateway Pickers is here. And when I sent him this mystery box, well, when he won this box, he had the outstanding idea for us to actually unbox it live. So I'm really hoping that if you guys are able to join us live, you enjoy this. But if you're watching the replay, um, let me just, first of all, give you a little bit of background information. Um, every thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel, all the way up to 10K, I'm giving away whatever great thing that I can think of. And for 4K, I wanted to play on the number four. And so I said I would be giving away a mystery box worth about $400, hopefully over $400 worth of listable inventory. So um, Chad should be able to pull at least $400 worth of listings out of this box that I sent him. I have sent him a 23 pound box. <laughs> he's got, all right, he's got the box cutter. He's like so ready to go. Um, but he won this on my live. Um, I go live on Friday nights and it was two weeks ago now that he won it on the live. And um, so you won it based on picking a number, right? I picked a number and then you spun a wheel. There was someone else that had the same number. And then I won on the, the spinning of the wheel. Nice. I think there were five, maybe there were six, but I, I want to say there were five people that were in the, um, in the final for that got their names yes. on the wheel. And then, so I spun the wheel and Chad gateway pickers, um, won. So I'm super excited. I think that this is a fantastic idea that he has. And, and we were talking about where to unbox it, his channel or mine. And I do have, um, his link in the, and I think, I, I think I'll be able to post it here. I have his link and here he is also, I'm going to post it in the chat. So you guys definitely head over to his channel as well and give him a subscribe um, because he said, no, like, let's do it over here on your channel. So this, I, I did reach out and say, let's do it on your channel if you'd like to, but he wanted you guys to be able to see this. So um, looks like my husband just made it home just yep. in time. I'll say hi to everybody. Um, before we say hi to everyone though, Chad, would you kind of give folks a rundown on what your channel is about? Cause you have like a pretty good sized channel. Um, and, uh, you know, you have a wealth of content over there. So would you kind of tell people about it a little bit? When we first made our YouTube channel, we started doing dumpster diving and repurposing items. Did that for probably two years. Then late 2019, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was halted for about a year. Then after that, we opened up the gateway pickers on eBay, started selling on there. And then I started doing resale content. And then that's today now. Awesome. And so Chad does have a nine to five that he works at and reselling is one of many different yes. entrepreneurial things that he does. Um, so I'm excited about that. I hope someday if you want to go full time reselling that you're able to, but sometimes we don't want to do that. You know, you may just love your job. Um, Jesse Shops is here. Excited to see you, Dorothy. Um, excited, she is excited to see what I sent. Um, my Looney Bin, hello and welcome in. Sarah Craig's mom is here. Glad to see you. There's no cabbage patches in there, Sarah. My husband has made it. Uh, Trevor, he's also a Missourian. He's in Columbia. He's excited to see what he didn't win. He's won two giveaways from me, but not the $400 mystery box. Hey, Carissa, I think Chris is traveling today. So, I'm, uh, I'm Carissa, we were just talking about you because I asked Chad if he had ever had the difficult task of putting a mystery box together for someone. And he said that he put one together for you. And it sounds like there was a lot of thought put into the box that, cause you said you even had some things made for her, right? Yes. I made her some window decals of her Instagram handle. That's just really, really cool. I didn't make anything that's in this box. And <laughs> Chad was actually really patient with me because it took me about a week longer than I anticipated to get this box out. But um, so let me just give you a little background before you cut this thing open. Uh, show them the size of the box real quick. I'm glad he was in Missouri. It didn't cost a ton to send this to him, but it's a 23 pound. It's a medium box, like a 19 by 17 or 14, I think. Um, you're a strong guy. He's like twisting this up like it doesn't weigh 23 pounds. That's the box that I almost tripped in my last video getting off the porch. Um, so most of these items, there's a few things that I picked out just for you, but most of these items were things that I purchased for me to sell. And I'm really picky about the stuff that I sell. I like to sell stuff that they're not making anymore. And I tried right. to challenge you and put like, um, yeah. a plethora of different options in there. So let's just open it up. Let's okay. see what's in there. Mabel, I'm glad to see you pop in here also. And Carissa says, yes, he did. It was super sweet and I totally appreciated it. So she loved the box that you gave her. Um, I told Chad that uh, once I got done filling the box with what I felt like was a good value and I hope to have exceeded what I promised, um, there were some voids. And so I opened up, um, I told you guys that I keep about 100 
um, items in like a death pile. I opened up that it's all clothing and I just started shoving clothes into the void. So there's some clothes that you're going to pull out. It's not I like other than putting bubble wrap in there. <laughs> I look good in these. <laughs> okay so um, like a pair of his shorts there like i yeah. say the clothes was kind of just a bonus um in lieu of bubble wrap so hopefully you'll be able to get i would assume on most of those clothing yeah. items 10 to 15 dollars a piece yeah. um some of them it's like american eagle and stuff and brands that i think um i sleep on a lot of times but when it's given to me i'll list it um that was the magellan shirt so <laughs> if you I don't know if you can see the tags. This one's just like a buttoned up Magellan shirt. I think Magellan's a pretty solid brand, but there's Another more belt. exciting things in there. Okay, so that one is a leather you know and fossil. yeah, it's a fossil belt. And fossil, I feel like fossil leather goods always do well for me. And do you sell a lot of belts, Chad? I've sold a couple belts, a couple hats. I have a, a pretty big belt inventory and I list and sell a lot of belts and I feel like it's a category that yeah. people look right past. So I wanted to include a belt. So that's, um, that's a pretty solid fossil belt there. Marker. Okay. That, um, I bought that hoping that it would work for me and I actually did wear it during one run, but that's a super, super warm, um, running vest there. I get, I don't guess it would have to be for running, but it's, it's very soft <laughs> running, hiking. Yeah. Yeah. I've but sold it, a few of these really and, um, we picked up these, there were skiing, there were snow skiing pants for like $5. They sold for 85 last year. Wow. This time of year. That's awesome. Trevor said he's had a fossil belt since 2005 and he's wore it every day for over 15 years. Yeah. A good quality belt. You can, you can keep forever. I don't feel bad about owning a Gucci belt because I can keep it forever. That's a really pretty dress. I feel like that could be a 15, $20 dress there. And again, it was better than bubble wrap. So hopefully all those clothes got there without any um, marks on them. I thought I about any marks or snags. Okay, good. I was like, I wonder if I should wrap each individual clothing item, but then it kind of defeated the purpose of them being filler. <laughs> There's a pair of Dansko. Those are um, vegan Dansko. Um, I haven't cleaned those up yet. A lot of the stuff did come out of the death pile, but those I feel like you should be able... Do you list Dansko a lot? I don't think we've done Danco. We've done other shoes just like these. Okay, yeah, I think that those, you know, should be about a $35 shoe plus shipping. Um, nurses really enjoy those shoes. Um, and then a keyword for those would be vegan because a lot of their products are leather. And okay. so you'll be able to pull up exactly that print if you type in vegan when you're searching for okay. comps. Okay, um, a vintage Christmas tree stand. This was part, yeah. I bought two of these from the last private pick that I did. And now is obviously the appropriate time to list vintage Christmas tree stands. And they always bring um, between $25, $30 for me. So yeah. if that one does come apart, it's going to save you in shipping. Um, yes. I thought about taking it apart, but I was like, if he's never seen one, he might not know how to put this thing back together. <laughs> one reason for for such a large uh box there three and a quarter discs yeah so those are some really old computer discs um yep. and they're they're the ones that are like colorful but you can still see through them they're translucent so that that's kind of a fun thing and i thought since you enjoy selling vintage toys i know it's not a toy but uh kind of goes along with like the I do electronics as well yeah i prefer sealed electronics rather than things i have to test but yeah. yeah. And so a good sealed, I mean, those are sealed and should bring you about 20 bucks. Yep. And I, I add shipping on top of everything. So um, the prices that I'm giving you, hopefully you'll be able to get that okay. plus shipping on these. Character balloons. Balloons There's, sell very well. Yeah. So you show the camera those balloons just in case people aren't familiar with these, because this is another item that I'm glad you're familiar with it. They're just like Angram style um, helium balloons, but these, and these have, have rug rats, rats on them. them. Yeah, so those are are uh, true vintage from the '90s with Rugrats. Um, I think you you probably be looking at twelve to fourteen dollars a piece on those. Do you think? Yep. Another thing to watch out for is beach balls. Yeah, <laughs> I sold hundreds of dollars balls. of beach balls. We sold so one for a hundred dollars. Yeah, and we're talking the jumbo ones, right, Chad? Yes, this was like a forty-eight inch one that you could stand up next beside. Nice. I couldn't believe yeah. when that when I comped it, 
I thought it was going to be a $5, $10 item. Then I comped it and I'm like, that's crazy. I listed it and it sold that day. So I probably undervalued it even more. Um, you probably I'm did. Real? Adam is here. Adam can't stay long, but I'm super excited to see you. Um, Chad, I want to talk to you before you go on about those beach balls real quick, because yes. um, I have heard two different reasons why those beach balls sell. One, people said is a fetish. And two is yep. because of the vintage vinyl people use for making cosplay um, costumes. Both are true. I think it is both. So yeah, because when I, I know a lot them, of people use them for photography props too. Oh, really? Okay. Because when I first bought them, I didn't realize that there was even a fetish community around them. And then I kind of was like, do I list these or not? I ended up listing them. And like, I mean, I sold hundreds of dollars of them. I cannot believe those. So here we got a bag of Hot Wheels. I think the oldest. Hot and Hot Wheels. So I don't know, since you do a lot of toys, if you're super familiar, that one that you're holding, I think is the oldest, 1974 maybe? Yep. Do you list or sell a lot of Hot Wheels? I don't, but I used to have over 500 of them when I was a kid, and now I'm regretting not keeping them. Yeah. Okay. So um, some of these actually came out of my husband's collection. He's, so these have only had one owner. And if they're rough, it's because he wasn't kind to them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look any of these up. I hope that you have some like uh, some grand slam in there. I have a few more bags of them. And I thought, you know what? I'm not even going to yeah. look these up. And I dropped it there inside of that box for you. So I hope there's something. I, is, the, is there a crunch car in there? There is a crunch car, which is this one. I felt like that one might be, you know, something of value. What do you think on average, if you were just a guess, since you and I, neither one have really looked up comps on these, what do you think an average value on a, a vintage Hot Wheels car could be? Loose Hot Wheels, I think, sell better and a lot, unless it's an exact one that is worth like mm. 30 to 40. Most of them see, are sold higher whenever they're still in their package. Gotcha. Okay. So lock them up probably is the best way to go. Like I'll comp them all and, and, and go from there. Okay. I wonder if Google Lens is able to help with comping those out. Vintage carry-on. It's stuffed with stuff. And it's stuffed with stuff. <laughs> yeah. I love selling vintage luggage. I had to I had to get rid of that one and, and send it off to you. But yeah, that one I was excited about. Um, Yellow Vera Bradley. Vera Bradley bag there. It even has the smell and aroma of vintage. Yeah, it smells like my grandma might have carried it and powdered her hair and her curlers yep. and stuff, right? <laughs> um, so there are three bracelets in there, and they are signed. So um, use Google Lens. I think two of them are Monet bracelets. Um, I was really excited when I found those because around here, folks don't really know a whole lot about Monet, but that's kind of a, a vintage jewelry line that has a cult following and the right piece can be worth something. And a lot of them are just bread and butter pieces. So yeah. you might even lock the two Monet up together. And that one that you're holding in your left hand there is the one that's not a Monet, I think. But it, I think it's signed something else, maybe. It may even be on the, like, if you open it up, I want to say there was like a signature or something and include the word signed when you're um, listing vintage jewelry also. Right. Adam, I'm glad that you think that it's looking like good stuff. Oh, Heather is Looks here. Like good stuff. <laughs> Best smell ever, Jesse says. Okay. And I gave you a cordless phone set that I didn't comp. I'm like, kind of, it's kind of driving me nuts. I hope that that one's worth a lot because I pick up every vintage um, phone set, like cordless. I don't know that that's yeah. vintage, but every cordless phone set, especially if it's multiple ha handsets, I pick up every one of them. I've sold them between 20 and $70. Yeah. And that one I think has an answering machine on it. Does that have an answering machine? I didn't. Talking, caller ID, going by the buttons. On, yeah, answering, erase, stop, start. So I'm hoping you got at least a $50 phone set yeah. there, maybe. So you're familiar. You sell cordless phones also. Necklaces. Okay, those are two bracelets. They're, I think, cool. Mizzou, and they're sterling silver bracelets. They're new with the tags, and they both have $50 price tags on them. So yeah. I'm thinking you should be able to get maybe between yeah. 20 and 30 shipping included. Um, for sterling silver, you know, hopefully. And I thought, well, maybe since you're in far northern Missouri, you may even be able to sell those locally. And then some vintage pictures. 
I tried to include some that might be interesting. Do you sell photos? I'm going to make you. I do not sell photos. I would, I've been wanting to, because another one of my side hustles is working at a studio downtown and we do preservation of vintage photos. And we also do work for the history museum. And so that like that last one that you showed has a car in it. I feel like if the photos have cars or really cool fashion or something really odd, like I come across a photo the other day and it's this group of girls and one of them has a bag over her face. And then this one has a background photo of Elvis in it. Yeah. Yeah. The girl has, has Elvis in the picture. And I just thought those were so cool. And some of them were dated said like 1959. Um, I consistently get $10 plus shipping per photo and a serviceman. Anytime it's like, you know, you use keywords, handsome serviceman, look at this guy in the glasses. I just think those are fun. And if you've never sold them, then here's like obviously a free way to jump right into it. That was a pretty photo of her too. Yeah, oh, that one, man, I, I I, like you, Chad. I almost hated to put that one in there because I thought that it's it's a photo of three kids. Let me remove my. You just muted yourself. He's so cool. That that photo is really cool. With I think that that's good subject matter. And that's yeah. what people really want. Um, Trevor says, are you a Mizzou alumni or is your wife a Mizzou alumni? Let me know. And this should sell well in your area. This is single stitch. Single stitch, Haynes heavy, St. Louis Rams. And they just said that Kroenke is going to be giving St. Louis $78 million in a lawsuit. Okay, I'm not a football fan, so I don't understand. I'm not a football fan. That was just on the news this morning that there's still a lawsuit against the guy who owned the Rams for leaving St. Louis. And all the revenue that they assumed was going to be made from them being here. Wow. I, um, I found that shirt that you just, um, tucked away there in a, uh, a private pig, a, a flea or a flea market, a thrift store called me about some items that they had just in a whole house clean out. And so that was only ever one owner to that single stitch yeah. shirt. And I felt like it's in pretty good condition. Um, I don't know if it would be a better local sale or something online, but hopefully you can get a little bit of money off of that one. That's pretty cool. I'll definitely do an online one. I'm not that hip on um, doing the local sales yet. I like to buy local, but selling, I keep on getting held up and people will say they'll buy something and they never show up. And Gotcha. Um, we've got uh, Tam and Bell sell from Scotland here and Jimmy is here. Ella is here and Horizon Picks is here. So super glad to see all of you guys here tuning in. Next, we have. That is a beautiful Calvin Klein dress. Yes. Um, really good condition. And I was worried that that might get something on it. So that's why I went ahead and wrapped that one up. But um, Calvin Klein, you should. I, I would not be surprised if. And I think that's a size 12. So it's a larger size. Definitely not plus size or anything, but it's yes. larger. Um, so I feel like you could get at least 30 bucks for a dress like that. And do you sell on Poshmark? No, just eBay. Oh, okay. Looks like my mom and dad are both here also. Hey, folks. <laughs> Steve says, try the dress on. <laughs> it's my father-in-law. <laughs> uh, okay. And a pair of New Balance here. And these, I feel like, were practically new condition. Yeah. Um. And now there are a few kind of New Balance that are brown leather like that that command a ton of money. I don't think this is one of them that's just, um, you know, worth $100 or anything. But it has that roll bar technology. Somewhere on the sole is written roll bar. Yeah, and somewhere when I've on the side. Those, yeah, when I've sold those in the past, that is an, an important keyword to include on those. But I feel like you should get $45 for those shoes yeah. just in the condition that they're in. Do you sell a lot of shoes? You have shoes on the rack behind you, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Sold a few pairs that we haven't had to clean. And then I just set up a utility sink over there. And then now I'll be able to do a, a more thorough cleaning and get those out of here. Props to you for not um, cleaning your shoes in the kitchen sink. <laughs> nope. Everything here is downstairs. I try not to do things upstairs. We will list drafts upstairs and then I'll bring everything down here and then photograph it and then inventory it. 
Nice. My oldest son has gotten into cleaning shoes for me and we split the profits. So I will pick up dirty shoes and split it with him. Oh, this is a good piece. And I'm yeah. glad that we're doing a live unboxing on this one, because I think if you're not familiar with brands or logo, you might have skipped right past. This is um, Ralph Lauren. So that one, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It was all I could do not to try that on. Um, and that last button is there. It's just unbuttoned. That beautiful. I would use uh, sailor breasted um, as keywords on there, obviously gold. But um, yeah, that piece is really pretty. I hope that you're able to get a good amount of money from that yeah. as well. Adam says he's got to cut out of here. Got a conference call at two. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving, Adam. Thanks so much for spending some time with us here. And crossbody bag. Yeah. And that is check the brand on the front of that. I found that. Um, Knox. Yeah. And uh, Noel Farm Girl Scavenger said that that's a watch brand. Um, yes. So I think that that bag, when I comped it out, was about a $30 bag plus shipping. Um, and it's got a cool cell phone holder there. I don't know. Maybe that's something you want to take thrifting with you. If you well, that's you what I was just thinking. Because yeah, my recent, of this? I've been clipping a camera here on a crossbody bag. Perfect. Hey, that might be perfect for you then. <laughs> my crossbody bag is pretty much just this pocket. Gotcha. Yeah, you could actually fit quite a bit in there then. Um, but yeah, I, I found that when we were visiting some friends of ours in Illinois um, a couple weeks ago, we went into a Goodwill and I found that. I was like, wow, score. I've never found this brand. I'm I'm trying to remember what else I put in this bag <laughs> or in this box. Okay, that's American Eagle jumper there. Um, and American Eagle, again, is kind of a sleeper brand. I get between $20 and $30 for most of the American Eagle brand uh, pieces that I post. And although it's a mall brand, I feel like people know how the brand fits them, kind of like Old Navy. They already know how it fits. And so they're not um, worried about ordering it online or ordering it secondhand. So maybe that, do you think that's why a brand like that yeah. does well? There's a lot of the mall brands that sell well. I'm in a group called Thrifting with the Jones, and that's all he sells is mall brand clothes. Okay. So that his reasoning behind it is people already are familiar enough with the brand. They're not taking a guess. That and they're not. A lot of people definitely with the pandemic aren't going mall shopping. They just buy everything oh. online. You're right. I see. I can forget that because in our area, there's not a thing that has not been open. And sometimes I can get like tunnel vision and forget the fact that some people are still in more of a lockdown situation than what we are. So, huh. That's interesting. Well, I hope you do well with that too. Do you guys have a mannequin that you put any clothing on or do you just do flat lace? I hope it's that guy there. Is that who you use? <laughs> no. We have this one. Nice. And then we have a smaller one on a pedestal. And I think that's was back there. It must be over there now. Perfect. And then we'll also like, that makes, like that makes my photo look so much better when I take the time to dress Becky. Becky is my mannequin. I put like crossbody bags and backpacks on this one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good idea too. And I have done purses on a mannequin before because I feel like it also kind of shows the scale of the item so that people right. um, know exactly like how big that purse is. And then um, I have also fully dressed the mannequin before to style the clothes or to style a certain bag um, that can get a little confusing if I'm looking at an item and it's too cluttered. I'm like, which item is for sale? So I don't Correct. do that all the time, but sometimes I feel like a certain items need that extra help. Usually the only thing I add in with a lot of my images is like acrylic stands that I have. But I try not to confuse people on what is coming with the item. We've had that happen, I think, once last year where they assume more was coming. I'm like, no, this is just an outfit. We just oh. sold an American Girl doll that my wife had used the doll as a mannequin. And I'm like, well, I hope they, they're assuming that this American Girl doll is not coming for $25. It's only the Christmas outfit that it's wearing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess you want to make sure and put like in the title, in the description yeah. and everywhere, like doll not included. Yep. Hmm. Doll not it's included with the Monster Highs we've been listing. We have a, when we first did it, we were using the Monster High stand. So we had to specify that it was not coming with the doll stand. The 10 I did today, I just used an acrylic stand for those. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Here's another um, 
fast fashion type of top, but this one may, you may want to, I don't know. Do you list seasonal stuff all year long? I feel like this could do no. well around the 4th of July. I try, I try to list things during that time. So like a lot of the 4th of July stuff I already have is in a box over there. Hmm. So I'll add that to that. Trevor brings up a good point that he has a mannequin, but her uh, chest is very anatomically indecent. I have seen people use those mannequins and he says, so he uses thick clothes only. Thank you, Trevor, because as a female, when I'm looking for clothes and it's like uh, some little tank top and yeah, her top, you're wondering what kind of store she came out of as a mannequin. Um, I will click right off that listing. So I feel like guys have to have to know how some of those um, listings actually are perceived by females. I won't shop on a store like that. I don't, maybe that's just me. Right. If there's any other females in the chat, I, it just makes me uncomfortable and I don't even want to look through it. Well, you also have to watch and not just buy a mannequin you see on Facebook marketplace or on eBay, because a lot of them, they're not proportional. Oh uh, yeah. And you're not they're actually like Asian size. The they're not American size. Well, I'll just say that. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, and whenever I'm dressing my mannequin, I will gather the clothes behind her up the clip so that yep. everything fits her because my mannequin is, she's like a size four, probably six. Right. And most of the clothes I sell are not because like size one, two clothing sometimes will fit this mannequin. And that's not what sells fastest. So I feel like mediums, larges and up, you know, any plus size clothes goes really quickly. Um, so I'm constantly pulling stuff back to make it fit my mannequin. <laughs> I think this one's a dress. Yep. Yeah. So maybe a nice springtime dress. If you guys weren't in the clothes, you might be just to get rid of all your bubble wrap here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, my wife cute. listed a bunch of this Matilda Jane. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I have a Matilda We went to Jane. a yard sale oh. and there was, I think we bought at least 80 pieces of all Matilda oh. Jane. Did you, what kind of prices did you get on it? And did you get little girls or women's Matilda Jane? Both. Is that have tags on it? Yes. This still wow. has the tag on it. Is this, you bought out a dealer that was selling Matilda Jane. No, they were just having a yard sale. And that's the kind of neighborhoods that are around here. Some of the stuff was really dirty. There was a, a puffer coat, I think, over there that I was attempting to clean and it wouldn't clean up. And this is just something I guess the daughter never used. What kind of prices did you get on the Matilda Jane that you found? I'd have to go back and see. I think nothing sold under like 35. No, I mean that that you paid for it. Oh, what we paid for all this? I think we only dropped like maybe 40 bucks. Are you got like 50 cents a piece until today? I'd have to go back through the videos to see, wow. but we just like, how about we take all this for $40? And they're like, yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. I need to go to St. Louis and yard sale with you. <laughs> That'd be great. And then like that backpack, I, there was that backpack and a couple other things that we seen as we were leaving. So she paid a little extra for those items. But yeah, it was a great <sighs> haul. That's incredible. Hey, Shay. Yeah, I see the score. And she just got a daughter. She probably knows how expensive stuff is. Isn't that cute? If your wife sees any of these clothes and she enjoys them, you don't have to sell them. Yeah. <laughs> Very Aztec style top there, kind of like a boutique piece. Yeah, I, uh, I tried to throw in all of the lightweight clothes because I was like, well, I, I grabbed a whole bunch of that. That cardigan is J. Jill brand. And that's a brand that I feel like a lot of people aren't familiar with either. But J. Jill basics can sell for really good money. I mean, you can get, you know, $30 on average I feel like for a J. Jill piece. No polls either. Hopefully not. Like I say, I included yeah. everything that I would have put in my own store. Right. Um, so so I, I try to be particular, but you know, sometimes you get home from the thrift store and you're like, well, how did I not notice this? And at the bottom is your card. How did it work? It's to the bottom. That's so funny. Yeah. Maybe you opened it upside down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm hoping though that you found some things in there that you'll be yeah, excited. Yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. Um, maybe you guys uh, will be able to to make some pretty good money off of that. And um, I feel like for my next one, I don't know, I may have to start a box and just start putting stuff aside. Maybe I can find some 
outstanding something or another. Do you think for the next giveaway, I should do another mystery box or someone yeah. suggested like a reseller um, tools box stuff to get people started in reselling? Reseller tools would be handy. Yeah. Um, different tape guns, different like Scotty peelers, things like that you could throw in. What's if you had to pick three things you wouldn't want to resell without? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but three items that like you don't want to pack or you don't want to resell or whatever without three items. What do you, you look like? You might already have three things in mind. I have lots of things in mind, but what is cost effective? Like I love my heat sealer. I have for these acrylic bags, these poly bags that you sent. I have a sealer uh -huh. for those bags. Wow, that's very handy because I can. It's almost like I can do vacuum seal. I can push a plush down, seal it. Oh, and then it's okay. only that big when it was a plush this big. That's incredible. Um, I do not own one of those. <laughs> I just happened to have one of those from a job that my parents did like almost 20 years ago, and I still had it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Like a tool I don't lately, I've been using a lot of this wrap stuff. Yes, I and have that. I have. I have multiple rolls of that. It's so good. And I've, I slept on it for so long. And then my Walmart recently put it on clearance for a dollar a roll. So I grabbed the rolls that they had, but um, this is just like that stretch wrap that you wrap everything up with that. And I wouldn't want to, I mean, obviously a scale is a must. Um, yeah. Scale. I have the same wrap and a larger roll. Wow. Yeah. That's big. That's like a whole thing of Saran wrap there. I usually, if I can't fit it in a poly bag, like a lot of the Department 56 stuff that I sell, I'll wrap it in this to waterproof it and then That's box good. it. That's what I'm always worried about, that something could potentially have any moisture to it. Because especially as we're headed into winter, I mean. This is a great conditioner for resurfacing on plastics. It'll bring the black back and also clean. What, what is it? Multi-protection? Armor All Multi-Protection Cleaner. Wow. Okay. And so when it brings the black back, have you kept something long enough to see, like, does it go back to fade it or it just stays nice? The stuff that I cleaned and put back and then it sold months later was still just as clean. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So maybe I need to get some armor all multi protectors, what you said it's called. Okay. Um, Another must have. Goo gone. Do you use this with uh, price tags? Um, I don't, I, every time I buy Google and I can't find it whenever I'm ready to use it. So I still haven't used it, but I use, um, essential oil, which I think is like, basically we're, we're both using an oil based type yes. of a cleanser. Um, so that Google on, does it help take Sharpie off and it takes the sticky off of an actual it takes sticky off, off? It takes Sharpie off. It removes spray paint. Oh, and it hmm. doesn't affect the original product painting. Like if you wow. use, here's another thing, another tip. Let's see where it's at. This. Goof off. This is some bad stuff. This will strip the paint right off of the material that you're doing. Wow. But it's great for metal. It's great okay. for glass. So non-porous surfaces that. That's I got awesome. this on accident thinking that this was goo gone oh. because the name was so close. Did you ruin something? Yeah, I, it was a, it's a trash can I got back there. It had some paint on it. And when I put that on there, the chrome paint on the plastic also came off with it. Dang. So if you're going dumpster diving where they spray paint and mark through a lot of stuff, yes. you have to have these tools that you're talking about. That's pretty much where this stuff came from originally. Awesome. So like in that Vera Bradley bag that I sent on the inside pocket, the store that I bought that from, they probably wrote in Sharpie on the inside pocket. What I use to get that off if they Sharpie directly onto fabric is hairspray. So just spray I've it with hairspray that. and scratch really aggressively and then blot it and then spray it and scratch it. Does it have price on the inside? Probably for, from that store. It has a number eight. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you spray with hairspray, then that you'll be able to okay. get that off. I I bought a Versace hat at that store once. And I mean, we're talking like one hundred and fifty dollars for this hat. I was able to get because I got the price tag off because I was like, I can't not get this Versace just because it has a price tag written like on the inside brown. Um, so, yeah. 
Heather says she loves Matilda Jane. Yeah, she's got a little girl too. And Heather, I find Matilda Jane women's clothing all the time at the mission. So you need to go there for sure. Another um, nice thing to have is a cloth tape measure. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, mine is actually in there because I was just doing shipping before we jumped on here. But um, do you lay out your clothes and um, show measurements in the photos or do you write measurements in your descriptions? Both sometimes. The lot, the most of the Matilda Janes that we listed, my wife didn't do any real measurements on them. Because another sold, brand that, like buyers of that brand, kind of know how it fits, right? And know whether or not it fits true to size. Someone asked me the other day on an eighteen-month-old outfit, uh, like new with tags from Walmart, does this fit true to size? I'm like, well, I'm not eighteen months, so I right. can't tell you. <laughs> hey, Beth, good to see you here. Um, yeah. So some, sometimes on those items, and I saw someone had a question the other day, what size foot does the person have that wore these shoes? I don't even know what kind of question that is. Sometimes you just have to move on, right? Another good thing you could probably throw in is one of these. Okay. Is that, oh, it's a blade. This is actually a, a leather spurring tool, oh. but I use it as a box resizer. Oh, to like uh, um, fold the box better. And it's thinner so that you can have your box completely full with items and then take this in there and then do your oh. scoring where those other ones are really big and bulky. They work mm -hmm. really well if your box is the size of like a file folder box. Uh-huh. Or if it's empty. Yeah. So what is that And you're less likely leather? to cut yourself. Is it sharp? It is. What is it called? This is a leather spur tool. Spur tool. Okay. And I think it's only like $7 for four of them. In in the actual leather working world, what is it used for? I think what they use this far is they'll go across the leather before they do the stitching. Oh, to bake holes. So, well, they'll do an imprint. And then when they're sending it through the stitching machine, that's their like line that they follow. Oh, perfect. Okay. That's pretty cool. I have um, a few leather tools because like we were just talking about nice leather belts. I feel like if you do invest in a good leather belt, it's worth having a one of the leather punchers in case yes. you ever need to punch additional holes. Because like I'm not going to take a Gucci belt and a knife and make another hole. And I've had to make multiple holes in that belt. My husband bought me that, I guess, shortly after I had our youngest son. So, you know, obviously you lose weight after having kids and I've had to book some additional holes in it. I'm like, I'm either taking it to someone or I'm going to learn how to do this myself. And so I bought the tool off of eBay and learned how to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to take a steak knife to something like that. Well, what's at least tell me what your favorite thing is that I sent you that you're excited about listing or something that you've never listed before. I always get so nervous making mystery boxes. I like boxes. the purse. I the like first. the vintage, um, like train bat train box. Yeah. Carry on. <clears throat> the crossbody bag is nice. Might keep yeah, that. I hope, I hope maybe you're able to use that. And you know what, um, Chad? I don't think I checked the pockets. I hope there's a hundred dollar bill in there for you. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I ever checked them in there, and I don't know if that store in Illinois was pretty. It was in Troy. It was actually close to you. You know where Troy, yeah. Illinois is. That's yeah. where I found that bag at, um, or a town right outside of there. That our friends live in Troy, and um, we were trying to eat Mexican at some place. Um, well, we were trying to eat um, Thai food at a place over there, and it was closed. So we had Mexican, and then went to um, what's the machine Chad mentioned first? What's the machine that is that? What is she talking about? What you use to make the my the heat sealer? Oh, the, the heat, heat sealer. Yeah. Let's see her. Hang on, he's gonna see if he can grab it or show us like what it does or oh, I can hey Andy. This is the heat sealer. Okay. So you would put your plastic in. Let's it looks like a food saver. That's what it reminds me of. Everything you sell is so colorful. Then I'll put little things in the small scrap bags. Wow. And then dolls. Is this thing always hot? No. 
It's got a wire that runs underneath here. So when you push this down, it's only hot for like less than a second. So wow. Like this, I just listed her. What I'll usually do is I will sign a card, throw it in. And seal to go. Oh, that's awesome. And then I'll use the scraps for other smaller things. Oh, wow. So you can seal all edges of it then and make uh, make another bag out of something. You can make bags. You can make air pillows with it if you wanted to. Angie said she wants one. And so does Carissa. Where do we find something like this? eBay and Amazon. They're like, if you get the 12 inch, I think they're $89.99. Huh. I feel like you could, if you could figure out some way to um, inject air in there, you could make your own air pillows. You can. If you say you have a bag and you leave a little bitty piece of it off of the wire, it'll seal 98% of it. And then you can push out the air and seal the last piece. Or you can do the opposite and you can inject air in and then seal it. Oh, okay. Like, um, I remember early on in reselling, please don't laugh at me, but I needed to protect something and I had no bubble. I didn't know about like foam yet. I didn't have anything. And it was like the last day to ship this thing. And I blew up balloons and put in there. Is that the stupidest thing ever? It would work as long as the balloons would bounce before they pop. <clears throat> yeah, they're thick. I mean, and you know, you can buy a whole bag of balloons for a dollar at the dollar store or Walmart or wherever. You can probably get 20 balloons. So what are we paying five cents a piece? But it just the thing right. is, it's really good protection, but it doesn't look the most professional. Like I just mailed, um, I don't know where the remainder of it is, but I just mailed a pair of boots and I put the pool noodles inside the shafts um yep. for shipping because I don't want them. I mean, the guy paid $170 for these boots plus shipping. So um I didn't want the shaft not to have some kind of stuffing in it. And, but I'm just like, I hope that it didn't look unprofessional when he opens it up and it's got pool noodles in it. I use a lot of individual sheet, um, non-printed newsprint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trevor likes my balloon idea. Food saver is a great idea too. Cause maybe the food saver does like a similar type of thing. Make yeah. my own airbag. They're liking that. <laughs> Way to be creative. Uh, yeah, we'll go with creative, resourceful, cheap. You know, Angie, I got a Beach Boys fleece blanket into a priority bubble flat rate once because it was accidentally marked free shipping and sold to the UK. Dang. My husband says should have used the balloon animal balloons. So, oh, yeah, for the boots. There you That'd go. Yeah. Perfect. My husband um, and I can make balloon animals and he's like a balloon animal artist as long as he has some type of a pattern to go off of. I mean, he can put like multiple things together. He could probably make you an outfit. So maybe in the future I could reach out to him and ask him to include some fun dog. Or, you know, we can make dogs and stuff the boxes with those. Is this, is this a good idea that someone is going to be so happy to open up or would they think that we're lame? It's creative. So if somebody opened it, like if you ordered a pair of shoes and when you open it up, there's a balloon animal dog taking up the empty space and it says, thank you. Are you excited? Or are you I, like, would, I would be busting up laughing and I would think that it was a very creative way of packing. <laughs> okay. You know what? I may just do this as an experiment and see how it goes. And like if I send out kids toys or if someone tells me something's for their kid, I include right. like sticker sheets and like. I always try to go a little bit extra when it's something for a kid. Um, let's see. Angie says, so far I've had zero customers say my order looks so professional. I'm buying it all. That's true. If they're like, it's not like, like they're coming back every time. I don't have repeat business. Do you? I've had a couple. I use plastic grocery bags as packing on smaller orders. I used, um, my husband's been saving the paper sacks for me because it's pretty similar to the brown packing paper. Yeah, that, that looks to, better than getting an order that's full of every single department store in their area's plastic bags. I think that's what Trevor's saying that he uses. <laughs> yeah, we, we got something like that and it came with a broken wing and you could tell the woman shopped at Schnucks, Dollar General, oh, Dollar Tree. That's hilarious. 
LPS Singing Sisters says, girl, I would love it. That's super cute. Free gift to my kids. I take the risk of looking unprofessional. Um, Yeah, I mean, I can't remember now who it was, but I was on a live once with somebody who sells these like $200 men's suits and mails them in like a grocery store thank you bag. He orders those bags. Yeah. But he doesn't call them grocery bags. He calls them thank you bags and says, what's wrong with putting this suit in a thank you bag? And everyone kept trying to tell him how unprofessional it looked. And he didn't understand that that was a grocery bag. He just kept saying, it's a thank you bag. I'm saying thank you. I'm sorry my lighting is so weird in here, guys. I keep going from like blue back to regular color here. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll just start mailing everyone balloon animals. If anyone comments on it, I'll say I value recycling. I have written and I've seen other people write. Um, we we endeavor to protect the environment and reuse shipping materials. Your item will, will arrive in reuse shipping materials. Yeah. Have you ever mailed in like a cereal box or anything like that, Chad? No, no I've not mailed in anything with a commercial printed branding on it. I've mailed in brown boxes that had logos on them, but not cereal boxes or any type of uh, food boxes. And never an alcohol box, if anyone's in the and chat. And never an or, alcohol box. Yeah, it, anyone that doesn't know, you're not allowed to mail in an alcohol box. Is there Are there any other boxes that you can't use to mail in other than alcohol that you're aware of? If it has a printed lithium sticker on it, make sure you cover it up. <clears throat> oh, that's a really good point. Because anything Saying, that contains lithium has to have that special sticker so that it doesn't go air. Yeah. And then I covered in my last video where I was uh, mailing like a bar cell phone that um, be sure that the battery is in the device and the device is turned off. It cannot be separate and the device cannot be on. So if you do mail with a lithium battery, just do those things. And I still go out of my way to tell my USPS workers, hey, there's a battery in here. Sometimes they're like, OK, you already did what you needed to. Like, But I'm, I'm a little paranoid that it's going to end up in the air or something is going to go wrong because there's enormous enormous fines for doing stuff like that improperly. Here's an image I can show you about the uh, squishing a plush. Is it going to focus? A little bit there. Oh, After wow. you heat seal it, it'll look like this. Holy cow. So you heat hmm. seal it and you smash it down. And then I got this 24 inch plush to fit in a 10 by 16 poly. You know they got that poly in and there, then I put and they that were like poly in another poly. Wow, you're a really good shipper and packer. Um, some people don't put so much care into their items. Um, I think that when they received that poly, they were like, "Did I order this from Wish?" You know, like on Wish right. when people order like a full size pillow and then they get dollhouse pillows. So they were probably worried it wasn't the right size, but then pleasantly surprised when they opened it up to see it was the right size. And then when you do that. Always put, like with a Sharpie marker, dotted lines and a little scissor so that they cut there. So you're not going to get the reply, oh, I cut my plush up while trying yeah. to get it out. Yeah, I, I just wrote on those boots that I'm shipping out, um, use caution and open sharp tools. Because you would think that that's common sense if you ordered like a pillow, don't run a razor blade over the top of it. But people still do. And I feel like, yeah, you could get you could get a return request pretty easy. He says, Trevor says, when I do, I write, sorry about the silly box on the side. Um, I have messaged buyers before and I'm like, uh, the packing is going to look a little crazy. I actually just mailed something and I use these a lot. And Jesse Shops is about to see this because I sent her something and it's shipped like this. So let's say that I was going to uh, mail this essential oil. I could wrap it up really, really well, first of all. And then I mailed something like this the other day. I had these two styrofoam bowls. And then I wrapped this up and then it was inside of that because these are so lightweight that they were able to keep um, a lot of items first class for me, but then still protect it. So I don't have to put it inside of a box. But yeah, you, I had this whole stack of bowls and I don't use paper plates or styrofoam or anything like that at the house. So what else was I going to do with it? I thought I may as well reuse it. I mean, the alternative was going to be throwing these away. So I don't know. I'm kind of with you guys on sometimes the semi wonky shipping um methods i mailed something in like um what kind of a box i'm trying to remember it was some type of a food bo oatmeal box recently oh. Be like it was the perfect size and i had it it was it was with some boxes that some friends gave me for free so 
I don't know. A cereal box would probably be pushing it for me. I don't think I could use that. But in a pinch, I may. There was one time when I went a pinch on something and I folded it inside out and then used it. The box. Oh, that's a yeah. good idea. And I think it was a box for like either energy drinks or insurer or something like that. Yeah. Folding the inside out is a good idea. Drew is, I don't know. Carissa said she's done that with plastic cups. Drew is laughing. I don't know if he's laughing at me because he didn't realize I was putting stuff in, around styrofoam or styrofoam bowls around stuff. I don't know. I guess if something came to me like that, I would at least be like, well, at least they endeavored to really ensure that it got to me in one piece. <laughs> it's a lot better than things that I've received on like from uh Facebook marketplace ads that I'm assuming they're not resellers because the way that they pack things is just scary. Yeah. And how do they think that it's going to get there in one piece with the way that some of the stuff is packed? Right. Not I hoard too many boxes from Amazon to be in a pinch. Yeah. And I'm, I'm reliant on my um, Amazon shopping friends. A lot of times I'll go pick up any of their boxes. I just mailed something on Poshmark in an Amazon box and I'm halfway done taping it and realize I have my eBay tape. So it's a Poshmark order in an Amazon box with eBay tape. I was like, I cannot have eBay tape on this. So I took it all off and I actually rolled it back up. I don't know where I threw the tape. I tried to get it back on the roll so that I didn't waste it. And I used my Amazon tape. I don't know where that is either. I just had all this stuff out and I thought, Oh, let me not have it crowded back here. Um, Drew said I would roll it in toilet paper if I had to. <laughs> now you see why I used clothing to fill the voids in your in your mystery box. <laughs> Another good item to have is like microfiber or like this is a makeup remover cloth. Yeah. These work great into getting into crevices. Oh, that's good. Do you use LA's Totally Awesome? My son uses that to clean shoes and Drew Profit Monsters was just talking about it to clean shoes. And then I think Renzi was like, oh, this stuff does work. Do you use it? Yeah, I, I, seen, I seen Drew mention and I haven't gotten any yet. That's what my son uses to clean um, all the shoes that he cleans for me because um, that's just the cleaner that I happen to bought. Um, but he seems to, Drew seems to like it a, a lot. This might be what a good thing to there. add into a box. That's true. That would be good. I, I don't know. I might have for to, flushes. like for 5000 maybe I will do like a reseller, um, reseller must-haves type of box. You know, I... Like uh, over the next month, because 5K is going to happen by the end of the year, I could pick up stuff like a little digital scale, something like I bought this for $2 at a yard sale. I haven't even used it yet. Do you use like a digital scale or are you as old fashioned as me? Let me show you what I, I actually have. Used. I have a 12 by 12, 200 pound digital scale. Me too. Look how professional I am. <laughs> you have a 200 pound max scale? Yes. Oh, can I show you what I do if I have something that weighs more than five pounds? Y'all better not laugh at me in the chat. I want to hear everyone say that they do the same thing. You see this bathroom scale? I step on it. I see what I weigh that day in those clothes. And then I hold the box and step on it again. And that's how that's I, how I used to weigh my pets. <laughs> You just deduct the difference. The important thing is if it says like 0.8, that does not mean eight ounces. You need to do 0.8 times 16 and figure out how many ounces that is. And I think that's where a lot of people are messing up and getting charged the wrong amount. Your son cleaning this shoes is a good gig. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be good too. I have one, but she's a little dirty. So I really got to brighten up the photos. That'd be good. Maybe I should just start. I'm trying to think of things that would be light. Because a lot of oh, the equipment... True would be heavy my first couple giveaways i got lucky because i did not specify and i'm sorry tam and bill i did not specify that the winner had to be in america and this last one i was like u.s winners only just because i don't even know how to mail something out of the country i use gsp and i don't know what shipping can you imagine me trying to ship that 23 pound box to like to yeah. scotland if they had one that wouldn't be cheap <laughs> I would just be like, you know what? Instead, I'm just going to PayPal you some money and you can just go buy your own stuff. <laughs> but yeah. So um, how many girth units is that? Have you ever heard the joke about the guy that, well, it's not really a joke. It's this whole stand-up act and he's trying to call UPS. Who is it? Brian. Um, what's his last name? Is it Reed? Brian. 
Brian said, my husband will chime in and say who it is. Anyway, he's um, he's calling UPS to try to get um, an estimate about this box. And they're like, what's the girth? And he's like, uh, seven. And they're like, seven what? He's like, girth units. Because he has no idea. Brian Regan, that's what it is. Um, and he's, he has no idea what girth even means. And then they're like, well, how much does it weigh? He's like, I don't know. We'll put it on your bathroom scale. He's like, it covers up the numbers. <laughs> and they said, well, his, he said, I'm over here like a, a Atlas trying to hold this box. He does a way better job of this, this act than I do. You have to watch it. <laughs> so I'll send you the link over on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Well, I hope that you guys are able to to dig through there and find all kinds of goodies, list everything, list the stuff that you weren't excited about cheap, and then it'll be out yeah. of your house quickly. <laughs> but we appreciate you guys being in the chat. I'm going to drop one more time Chad's link here. If you guys head over there and subscribe on his channel. Um, Chad, what do you got coming up on your channel that we can look forward to? I haven't posted anything since mid mid may and i've been saving all of my yard sale footage to push them out of season so that there's some new yard sale footage to watch during the winter months that's a pretty good idea so you, that's what we're going to be looking forward to is some that's new what yard i'll sale be stuff? putting up awesome that's awesome i was uh, just listening to the triple thrift podcast and uh josh's advice to everyone growing their channel was you know what like don't don't start out making it complicated. Hey, I got to do three videos a week. They got to be 15 minute videos. He's like, put out one five minute video every week. That's it. And just grow your channel with one, you know, because I think sometimes we, we do overcomplicate it and we, we um, disregard the effectiveness of baby steps. And yeah, so put out one video a week. If you haven't posted anything since May and just like get back into the swing of things, I'll be, I'll be looking for them. And then if they're really, really good, then I'm going to drive over to St. Louis and um, yard sale over there when it comes spring. <laughs> well, if you ever want to go to the bins, let me know. We got a bins I, here. I shop at the bins sometimes. And Marcus, I don't know what, you know, Dixon's Pickens, Marcus. Yes. I've, I've read about that. Yeah, he'll go. He, he's from Cape, so he'll go um, over there to to the bins also um, in St. Louis. Now, there's two of them up there, though. The one under the overpass, I feel like I find more cool vintage there. And yes. then that one that's like kind of bougie, um, I've only been to one time. Yeah, there's the one over by the outlet malls. That's the newer one. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one down in the city across from what is now the foundry. That one's hey, interesting. Derek. <clears throat> Derek is here. Glad to see him here. I was just messaging him earlier to try to check on him and see how he's feeling. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that he's, he starts to feel a lot better. I think Drew and I need to send him over a care package this week and, and try to try to insert some sunshine into his day. I know he's had some limited mobility. Um, but yeah, um, the one that is over there by the outlet mall, Marcus and I were talking about how like, you're kind of driving out into the middle of nothing. And you're like, wait a minute, it can't be out here. And then all of a sudden this right. building just materializes. It's, and it's just, just there's a field. The bins. Yep. It is. It's like next to a field. It's, it's really weird, but I, I find some good stuff there. So um, Carissa just dropped your link again. So yeah, you guys be sure to um, watch one of uh, Chad's videos while you're over there. Give him a thumbs up and a comment. Try to drive some traffic over there to his channel as well. Um, Rachel, I got to run. My headset just died. Oh, Carissa, I hope you have a safe trip the rest of the way over to Arizona. She's go getting to go see family, which is awesome. So um, Chad, I'll let you get back to your right. Thanksgiving celebration and, and preparation. I'm going to run to the post office and send off. I only had a few things going out today, um, but everybody don't forget that there's no shipping tomorrow. So right. if you have anything that needs to go out and get it out before the mail uh leaves today right i think i got three things i can pack still yeah, yeah. i only had five things going out today and that was on two oh. different platforms so it wasn't uh it wasn't a huge sales day for me yesterday hey paul flipping sports guy is here congrats again on a thousand subscribers paul super super happy for you um, but yeah, if you guys, um, just are tuning in, check the replay of this, see the things that I included in the box for Chad. And, um, I hope that you guys have a, have a fun time selling all these items. Yeah. Thanks again. And thanks and for I'll the great idea about on things as they're selling. Yeah. Yeah. Keep me updated. I hope, I hope that you make some good money. Um, and, uh, thanks for the idea about opening it live. So, oh, and I, before you guys do leave, 
I promised that the next video that come out was going to be about how to increase your 90 day total the way that I did. Um, so forgive me about the impromptu live. This was just too exciting and we wanted to do it. The next video still is how to increase your, your 90 day total in just 90 days, um, you know, hopefully by two or three times. So God bless you guys. We hope that you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.